everyone, I'm Allie with Potomac Beads, and in this Better Beater episode, by request, I'm gonna show you how to make your own wire clasps. Most of these are great money-saving tips, as well as great ideas to kind of up your game and make your jewelry your own. They're very, very simple techniques, and even if you're not into wire working, you can watch and learn how to do these very, very simple wire ideas. The first and most basic clasp is gonna be the S-hook. This works really well for necklaces and bracelets that have a little bit of weight to them because they are going to open and close. I would suggest that you use nothing thinner than a 20 gauge wire. 18 works really well also. So the most simple way, I have one piece of 20 gauge wire here, is to take something like a pen or a mandrel if you have it, then one way around the pen, go to the other side of it, Bend the other way around the pen, and there you have it. Literally that simple. What you'll do then is take your wire cutters, cut down the wire on either end, right where the loop ends, take those scraps and toss them out. If you're using sterling silver, you can keep those little scraps. Take your pliers then, your needle nose pliers, bend back the edges here, so that way they don't grab onto any clothing pinch them down. You can also use a hammering block if you want to, to hammer this down to make it a little stiffer. And like I said, if you're gonna do just this simple S, I would use 18 gauge wire. Close those up a little bit, and there is your simple S hook. So easy, so simple to do. Keep in mind that you can also do your own ear wire out of 20 gauge and make the loop in the front smaller. To up the game a little bit, you can take a bead, and wrap it to the middle of the S hook to make your design look a little bit more completed. Take some thinner wire, like a 24 gauge wire. I have the copper here to show you the wire difference. You're gonna wrap around that thicker wire, maybe three, four times. Slide your bead on and into place. Here's just an eight millimeter faceted round rose quartz bead. Wrap over the bead and three wraps on the other side. From here, cut down the extra wire on one side, cut down the extra wire on the other side. Go back in with your Sharpie, hold it right after the bead, bend the wire one way, flip over to the other side, hold the Sharpie. You can also use a Bic pen if you want the loops to be a little smaller. Bend over the Sharpie and there you have your clasp. Again, right in the middle of the bead, go ahead and trim down. Go in with your needle nose pliers Flatten out that 24 gauge wire that we wrapped around. And then last thing, bend the edges back just like we did on the other piece. Once you have that technique, you have the S hook complete. Again, you also know now how to make actual ear wires because the ear wires are the same exact thing, just with a smaller loop at the bottom. I have tons of different wire working videos for all of these different techniques, but this, in my opinion, is the most simple clasp, that S form. The next clasp is gonna be the hook and eye clasp. I like to use this with beads, but you don't necessarily need to have beads as part of it. I'm gonna show you how to make both the hook and we're gonna make it that it's doubled over, and the eye. Keep in mind when learning the eye, this is great also for either side of your S hook. So we're actually going to start with the eye, and I have a six millimeter bead here, and one piece of 18 gauge wire or 20 gauge wire is going to work. I have this about four inches long, which is gonna be more than enough, but if you're just getting started, it's nice to have extra to hold on to. From here, I'm gonna grab my round nose pliers, and about an inch down from the end of the wire, go ahead and hold the long portion of the wire and bend that short piece back to 90 degrees. Hold that round nose pliers to the loop size that you want on your round nose. Come over the top of the round nose pliers till the wire touches on the other side. Flip the jaws of the pliers by rotating and take that wire back 90 degrees. That makes a nice eye which we are now going to coil. Pick up your needle nose, your chain nose pliers, and wrap once, twice, three times, up to you, however many times around to make that little noose or that coil eye pin. Grab your wire cutters, cut off that extra wire, and toss to the side. Grab a six millimeter bead, place it onto the wire. I have the turquoise ones here that were eight millimeters, so you can do any bead size. And then on this size here, 
you're going to do the exact same thing. Give yourself just a little bit of room, bend the wire to the back. I'm gonna leave myself enough room to make the coils on the top here as well. Over the top of the round nose pliers till it hits the bead. Switch from the bottom jaw to the top jaw by rotating the pliers and back to 90 degrees. Again, grab the chain nose pliers. Make sure that your loops are facing the same direction and then coil around. Generally speaking, you'll have extra wire and to make it look a little bit more fancy, you can take that wire over the top of the bead, once, twice, kind of spiraling it around and then coil it down around that second side. Go ahead then take your wire cutters and cut down that extra little wire now that we have that simple link made, which is actually can be used kind of to go on and on and on, we're gonna make the eye to go on the other side of that hook. So what we're going to do is we're gonna take that same wire, whether or not it's 18 inch or 24 gauge, and we're gonna go back about two inches and bend the wire right in half of that two inches. So you're about an inch there on either side. So you're gonna end up with an inch of wire that's bent over top of one another. Pinch that wire. If you need to and you don't have enough strength to, go ahead and just go in and pinch it together with your pliers. You wanna to try to keep it nice looking if you need to. You can use your uh, nylon jaw pliers as well. So go ahead and you want it as flat as you can towards one another. If you have a little bit of a loop in there, that's fine as well. Once you have that flat there, you're going to go back to the end right where it is, ending up Take your pliers and bend that short piece across the tall piece so it's just sitting on the side. So it's like a little letter number four. Hold right at that bottom portion and wrap that piece of wire right along the longer piece of wire. That's gonna be my hook. If you have a thick piece of wire, you do not need to double over the wire like this. You can just do single. This nice thinner is good because if you're using a 20 gauge like I'm using, you'll get more options of which beads will fit on. But I'll also thicken it by using this double to make sure that you can have uh, the clasp stay shut. From here, go ahead and put on your bead if you're adding a bead. If you're not, skip that portion. Here on this side, go ahead and do the same technique, bending the wire to the side, making your loop, going over the top, spinning to the bottom, and coiling. If you want to, you can again take this longer piece of wire, this is why I let a lot of extra, and coil around to make it matching, or cut it off if you wanna keep it nice and simple. Wrap around that end that you just coiled one time, cut off the extra wire, and keep this scrap because it is longer. Usually, generally speaking, I will keep scraps of wire for plated metal about two inches and longer. Grab your Bic pen and curl that doubled over side around the Bic pen. Push it a little bit to the back. Take your needle nose pliers and bend that up to finish off that hook and eye. There you have a nice matching set that looks perfect for the end of your necklaces or bracelets. Keep in mind again that loops can be attached to that first simple S hook on the beginning one that I showed first. This next clasp that I show you is often called the Egyptian coil. It's basically an upgrade from that hook and eye clasp, making just a little bit fancier of a design. You can also include beads on there if you want. I'm gonna show you how to do just that nice spiral. This is also a great spiral for creating your own head pins or your own ear wires as well. Coming in with about eight inches of 20 gauge wire, and I, you can use 18, 20 gauge, anything thicker again than 20. You're gonna take your round nose pliers and make the tiniest loop possible on your wire. I coil that about one and a, one and a quarter times, and then I'm gonna switch from my round nose pliers to my needle nose pliers. I'm holding with the needle nose and bending the wire around the already pre-existing loop. Hold the pliers, bend the wire. Reposition to right where the coil stops and bend half a turn. Keep going. And the size of the loop is going to, or the size of the coil rather, is only going to be restricted by the amount of wire that you begin with. Once you have the coil to the size that you want it to be, and here I have about eight inches, so I can make this as big as about a quarter if I want to. 
and can keep kind of coiling. You can see how you just kind of reposition and hold. Once I have the size that I want it to be, I'm going to hold so that my needle nose pliers intersect with that coil. From here, take the wire that's remaining and bend towards that coil. That creates a little carrot in the wire, which is gonna allow me to attach to whatever piece of jewelry or whatever ending I need to. Continue that coil to the other side, and then you're gonna repeat the steps that you've been doing. Go ahead and grab your Sharpie marker, a mandrel, just bend around to make your loop for the opposite side of the clasp. From here again, just trim down, and if you want to hammer, you can do that as well. Trim down any extra, toss that scrap off to the side, right into the trash can so it doesn't poke at you, and grab your pliers and just turn up on the end of the piece. For the other side of the clasp, you can simply, if you want to, go in and create another coiled loop for your ending on your clasp. If you want to make it a little bit fancy, you can do that same coiling technique, and then I'll show you how to make the loop. So I have a much smaller section here. If I want to, I can do a bigger section, but I'm gonna take these loops here to make this smaller section and do the exact same thing. I'm coiling around to make my little coil, getting to the point where I'm about a coil and a half in, and coil and a quarter, and changing over to my needle nose pliers to hold it flat as I coil. Once you get this coil to the size that you want it to be, and again, the coil is gonna be restricted by the amount of wire that you have, you're gonna go in with your round nose pliers, hold just like we did with the needle nose, and this time make a loop. So you're switching from your top jaw to your bottom jaw, and you're just making a loop. This is also a cute way to make a little charm to dangle down and hang on. Take the coil around there to the opposite side. Grab your round nose pliers again to the end of the wire and round it out to make a loop. That loop then, sitting across from the other loop, is going to be your wire to connect onto for your other side. This is also, again, that base for the Egyptian coil, which is another design, and we have videos on that as well. So we've learned how to do the simple S-hook. We've learned how to do the simple hook and eye, or the eye hook. And we've also learned how to do a little fancier Egyptian coil look. The last one I'm gonna show you is how to do an actual toggle out of wire to create for the end of your pieces. So the first thing to do for the toggle is determine the size of the loop that you want your toggle to be. In addition to the toggle loop, there will be a toggle bar that is created. I'm gonna begin by showing you how to do it without the beads and then I'll talk you through how to add the beads if you'd like to do that as well. Once you have the size, and I have a nice thread wildfire cord cutter, that's the size that I'm gonna make my loop. I have about seven inches of wire, more than I need here, but that's what I cut off my spool. I'm gonna make my first loop taking my wire right around that rounded structure, whether or not it's a mandrel or just something like this. Take that needle nose pliers here and bend straight the longer piece of wire. The shorter piece of wire, we're going to wrap around that longer base. I have just one complete loop around and I'm gonna take my wire cutters and cut off that extra wire. That short piece of wire, again, toss to the side right away, so that way you do not poke yourself on your bead mat. I'm taking my needle nose pliers, I'm gonna kind of pinch that down, since it escaped from me and got a little bit further up, to make my loop nice and circular. This is also a great way to make your own findings or your endless rings or hoops for earrings. Slide on a bead if you'd like. That's gonna sit right at the top. And then on this other side, you know what to do. Go ahead and take your pliers, bend to the side, Grab your round nose pliers and make your loop. After the bead, if you want to, you can go in here and coil, going around the bead if you want. If you want to stiffen up the loop as well, you could have taken a thinner gauge of wire and coiled around the loop to make it a little more substantial. You can also make it a little bit more fun by taking extra wire if you have a lot and coiling it around the loop, just in a free form or adding extra beads to make it a little bit more substantial and to add to the fun design of it. Every loop, when you have it on the actual toggle loop, 
you're going to need a bar. The main thing about the bar and the main thing to keep in mind is that you need the bar to be large enough that it's not going to go through the loop when you have it on. You do not want to lose your clasp. So what I'm going to do is, after tucking this in here, cutting this down, and pinching this, I'm going to grab another piece of wire to create the bar for my toggle to fit inside of. So we're going to go into the piece here, and again about two inches, take that inch back, fold it in half, pinch that wire down so that way it is doubled. From here, take that wire again, cross it over like a four right over the longer piece. Take that short piece of wire there and coil it around the longer piece one time. If you need to, hold with your needle nose pliers, that way the wire doesn't move on you. The only difference now is after you have this loop right here in the middle, we are going to create another loop. So you want to do a loop here in the middle, and then we're going to mimic the same thing on the other side. You want to make sure when you're doing this again that that bar is not going to fit through the end of the piece. Doing the same amount of distance, and if you want to, you can measure it out on a ruler. Go ahead and again bend that wire back. Kind of press it down and add that in. You can take that wire then on this side of that coil or of that loop, hold on and coil one time around. If you want to for a little decorative piece, you can take whatever bead you added here along the top, slide that onto the wire, take that wire over to the other side and coil along that piece as well just to add that toggle look. You can also add that piece of bead in front of the loop as well, but it is because of the loop style gonna stick off to the side. I'm gonna keep it nice and simple and just cut off this extra wire right after that loop. From here, take your pliers if you want to and add a little sway to the, to the actual toggle bar, kind of bending that over and having that little loop. Same thing on the other side, bend it over, adding a little bit of sway to that toggle bar. From here, generally speaking, you need to have an extra little loop to attach onto the toggle bar so you can get it off and on the project that you'll be working with. If you want to learn that coiling technique on the toggle, you're going to take some extra wire, like 24 gauge wire here, and just coil around that thicker gauge of your wire before you go in and make the loop. If you want to, you can add little seed beads on along the way, wrapping and coiling over them. It's a good idea when doing this on the loop for the toggle that you want to coil the whole entire size of the loop. The nice thing about the coil is it'll actually stiffen the wire, making it a little bit more decorative as well to the design. Coil along and you can see, hopefully I'm not nauseating you, you can see kind of how that coiling process occurs. And you wanna make sure those coils are nice and tight against one another, as well as nice and tight along the wire that you're wrapping. This wire is not positioned yet right along the end because I can currently move this around the wire. Once you have all of your loops on, you can squish it down towards the end of the wire wherever you're gonna get ready to make that loop if you're wrapping around any sort of uh, pen or any sort of rounded tube to get that nice toggle size. You're gonna cut down the ends of that coil on one side, cut down on the other side as well. And again, if you want to, you can use little seed beads, but that's how you're gonna get that nice coiled wire look of that 24 gauge wire around the thicker piece. This gives you a little bit, again, more detailed look. And prior to going in and curling the wire, take your needle nose pliers and just bend down on the end of that wire to kind of finish it off. If you wanna make a toggle bar for that coiled loop here, what you can do is take that thinner piece of wire, coil it around about three inches of the thicker piece, make a loop in the middle of your wire just with your round nose pliers, taking that wire basically below the loop and continue to coil along the other side. Again, when it comes to the toggle bar, you wanna to make sure that it's long enough that when you have 
the bar in your piece that the end is not going to fall through. Once you have it long enough, you can take your wire cutters, cut down that extra 24 gauge wire that we were coiling with. And if you want to, again, you can add beads along the bar and go in then with your pliers, cutting down the ends of the loop just enough so that you have enough to hold on to to bend back along the project. Once you have that, you have your nice toggle bar that can go with your loop. Again, keep in mind when looking at all of these, how these could actually be used in other methods and other jewelry making as well. So no matter how complicated or how simple the project, you can always upgrade by making your own clasps. Again, if you're not somebody that does wire working, hopefully this still gives you ideas and ways to work with wire to make your jewelry a little bit more unique as well as usually a little bit more cost effective. As always, thanks so much for watching this Better Beater episode. Remember, if you need any materials to make your own clasps, you can look at the link below me in the description of the product to get those links for potomacbeads.com as well as potomacbeads.eu. Hopefully, this answered some questions, gave you some ideas, and made you a better beater. Remember, you can always subscribe to this YouTube channel to get regular updates, give a little thumbs up if you like the Better Beater episodes, as well as give your tips and advice in the comments below. As always, thanks so much for watching, and enjoy becoming a better beater. Later.